I got a request to do a video on how I set up my charts, how I'm using the uh, Easy Harmonic Indicator version 2 with the Renko dots, and just basically all in all how I'm um, trading uh, with that um, system or how I made a system out of using all this. Let's take a quick look. My first moving average, so basically I have three indicators or four indicators. Three being that I have the Renko dots of the Super Signal, uh, which is the Easy Harmonic Indicator version two. Um, I don't have the harmonic patterns, I just have the Renko dots. The other thing I have is um, the Relative Strength Index. Now this one, basically what I want to do is I want to show you that um, on the levels I have a 20, an 80, and a 50, really all I really care about is the 50. I don't care, most people use this indicator looking at overbought and oversold, which would indicate that's past the 80 or the 20. Um, but in, in all, um, you know, and realistically, I don't even need these two. So maybe I'll just go ahead and just delete it just to kind of show you how um, that would look. So with the RSI, all I'm really interested in is this 50 line. And then of course the, the last thing or the last two things, really I just consider it one thing, is just a moving average. And I have two of them. The first moving average is a, is a simple 50. Simple moving average 50, period 50. And all that's good for really is to help me show trend. Okay, so right now you can see it's kind of flat. And that just means that we're kind of in a channel. We're, we're trending or we're, we're uh, not trending, we're um, ranging. Price is just ranging back and forth, up and down within a channel. It's slightly heading down. Okay, that's all that this moving average is used for. The other moving average, which is more important to me, is a, uh, it's a simple moving average. For the one hour chart, I have a period three, shift two, or shift three. You just wanna, you, you're gonna wanna play around with it. But for the one hour, I, I, I try either the three or the two is for a shift, okay? And I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna show you what that shift is for. So. Um, basically, let me just kind of lay out for you this scenario. Um, what I'm looking for is initially I'm looking for the uh, Renko dot or the Easy Harmonic Indicator is the leading indicator that I'm using. I'm using that to determine if I'm going to be placing a buy or a sell. Okay, so right now we've got a green Renko dot. It doesn't matter how big it is. You can see there's a small one here or a big one here. It doesn't really matter. All I really care about is if it's uh, showing up. Okay. The next thing I look at is the moving average, uh, the shift moving average. I don't really use the 50, this gold moving average. It's just kind of there as a reference, it's just kind of visually see what the trend is. Um, but the, the shift, this pink one, is much more important to the actual trade. Okay, so in this instance, what I'm looking for is the Renko dot is a green dot, so it's a buy. I'm looking to buy. And it has to, the basic, the basic rule is for me, is that the price has to cross and close above. If it's a buy, it's going to be above this uh, shift moving average. Okay, so I'm looking for it, this price to cross above and close above. The next thing that has to happen is I'm looking for the RSI to cross. If it's a buy, it's going to be coming from below and above the 50 on the RSI. So it's going to have to come up above here. So I'm looking for the candle to cross above, close above the, the uh, moving average here. And then I'm also looking for it to close above the 50 on the RSI. And so basically what that indicates to me is that there's momentum at that point. And so at that point, I can place an order. Now my orders are typically stop orders. So if I'm buying, it's a buy stop. If I'm selling, it's a sell stop. And that just means that I can set it, and I'm, it's not a market order. I'm not jumping in at that time, although sometimes I do that. But 
it just kind of it's a, it's like a little extra level of oomph, if you will. So I place it, if it's a buy, I place that buy stop order just a slightly above current price. That way I know it's got to keep going up for it to get triggered. And I know it's just added momentum. So anyway, why don't, why don't I just get into it and I'll just kind of show you what I'm looking for. So I'll slow it down. And this, what I'm again, I'm looking for a buy. And price is just kind of, um, you know, if you notice, it's not above. Even though we had a green dot, it didn't jump right in. Oh, okay. So here, if I had to jump right in, I would have been trending down. Okay. And um, as you can see, price is, is, is across the moving average, that shift moving average, and it's heading up above the RSI. It's not there yet. Okay. Now we've got another close above. So let me just show you. I'm looking at this candle. It closed, right? The candle closed here above the shift moving average, but it's not above the RSI, the 50 and the RSI. So it's not really a valid entry. It's close. It's really close. And and if you're, you know, if I'm at times I want to be aggressive, I just, uh, I, I know it's going to go up, then I'll just go ahead and get in. Okay. But if, if I want to be a bit more conservative, I'll wait. I'll just wait just a bit more for the next candle. And I'll just wait and see what happens. So as you can see, this is kind of playing around. And now, as you can see, it just barely closed above that RSI. So here's what I would do in this situation. I would place a buy stop at this level, which is kind of like the, the highest point um, since it's crossed over that moving average, kind of like right there. And my stop would be right at the... Renko dot where it drew, and I'm typically going to do 20 pips, no more than 20 pips. Um, advance, um, I, I can get into like a trailing stop and stuff like that, but in general, if I'm just kind of setting for getting, I'm looking at anywhere between 10 to 20 pips scalp. That's just kind of what I'm looking for uh, with this particular trade type of trade. So um, you could do a one to one. Um, or I've done one to one in the past where my stop, I know it's a 13, say 15. So I might move this up to, you know, 15 or make it one to one. Okay. And so again, we'll just kind of run it and see what happens. Um, as you can see now it's, it's kind of got some momentum and it got close and boom, there we go. So as you can see it triggered, it would have uh, it would have been close. It probably would have got out. So with my my 15 pips, I'm in and out. Okay, so that that's just kind of an overview of how I'm using the all of these indicators kind of together in conjunction, the RSI, the moving average, and the Renko dots. The 50 again, the 50 simple moving average is just kind of like a reference to see what the overall trend is. And the reason why I want to know what the overall trend is, because that usually determines how I'm going to be placing my profit target. You got to remember these Renko dots and the harmonics are counter trend trades. Typically they're typically counter trend trades here at this red one here. That's not usual. Okay. So if I know I'm just going to be a with trend trade, I'm really interested in it because I know it's just going to be an easy move down. It's with the trend, you know? So in any event, um, this was a really good example of how I'm using these indicators to place trades, set my stops, um, set my targets, um, and just, um, you know, make kind of rapid scalps, say 10 to 20 pip or 10 to uh, 100 to 200 points, depending upon how you calculate out, um, you know, within MT4, what do you consider a pip? What do you consider a point? It's, it's, it's 100 points, 20, 200 points, slash 10 pips, 20 pips. Um, that's kind of how I calculate it. See how it crossed over here? But it didn't close over. We're not above the 50 on the RSI. So we're, uh, it's just not a valid entry for me. There's no momentum. The momentum is still heading down. So until we get above those things um, uh, th that I'm looking for a buy. Okay, so now we are, right? So now we've got a stop 
at the Rinker dot. We've got it closed above the 50, uh, excuse me, the 50 and RSI right here. And we're above this um, move, shift moving average. So that would have been a valid entry for me. Um, here, you know, I might want to, because I know we're get, getting into a stronger downtrend, I might want to shorten my target up a bit. Okay, maybe only 10 pips, something like that. Let's see, what are we at? Yeah, you know, 10, 12 pips, something like that. And we'll just kind of see what happens. And we got close and we're really close. That would have been scary, right? And boom, we just hit. Basically what I'll do is I'll, I'll get this scenario. If you re recall on this trade, I was on this candle right here. This was my entry uh, at the close of this candle. And um, I, I basically would have set a, uh, a, a, stop, a buy stop order kind of like right here, right about here at this level. And I would have waited for this candle, the next candle to paint. And I would have gone to work and just left it, let it run, set my stop here and just let it run. And so within, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours, I would have got my, my winning trade. Okay, so you can just stack these up. You can find, you know, this is just one trade of uh, 10 pips or 15 pips. If you could have two of those, you're at 20, 30 pips for the day. What's wrong with that? That's great. By the end, you do that every day. At the end of the week, you're well over 100 pips, 200 pips. Okay, so what I want to do is show a situation where a loss occurs. And um, just as you know, just to kind of be upfront, just to display how this does happen and um, what, you know, kind of what it looks like. So in this scenario here, um, let me slow it down just a little bit. Oh. Okay. So what we have here is we have on this candle right here. We have, um, let me just point out, at the close of that candle right there, at that intersection of where I have that, would have been a valid entry for a buy. So we have a green Renko dot or a buy signal. We've crossed above the moving average. We've closed above the moving average and it closed above the 50 on the RSI. So essentially this would have been a valid trade and I would have placed my stop here at the Renko dot and I would have placed um, my take profit you know, 10 to 15 pips, maybe even one to one um, risk reward. So I think this is about a 20 pip risk, 20 pips, right? Uh, reward would have been 15, 20 pips, something like that. And so we'll just kind of let this play out and see what happens. Um, and as you can see, boom, we would have stopped. We got stopped out right on this candle. And as you can see, the original Renko dot has disappeared. And we had another Renko dot here, which has disappeared and it has repainted. So um, the momentum was not there to go through, even though we were above the 50. So I don't want to give the impression that, yeah, that's always the case. It's not always the case. Okay. That's the whole point. We're playing probabilities in trading. We're not playing absolutes that it's, oh, it met these rules. Therefore, it has to go up. No, it doesn't have to go up at all. It can completely fail and your trade goes out of whack. So I just wanted to show that and let you know that there are situations where it does not actually work out in my favor. Um, it does, it does fail. Um, nothing is perfect. And this is what happens. Um, however, what all I can do is just continue on, get it out and just chalk it up as a loss and move on. So here, what I'm looking for is now that we've got some distance between the 50 and um, where price is at, I'm expecting it to kind of shoot back up, back towards this 50 moving average. So now it's a bit of a more of a valid um, situation where it would be a good counter trend trade. Over here, it, it's been kind of ranging along that 50 and we're below the 50. So it's it's kind of like a, a flip of a coin you know where it could have gone crossed above and shot above price or shot above the 50 and we would have been good or it um did what it did and, and just kind of moved back down again so here 
Now I'm expecting it to shoot back up towards that 50 moving average and I'm really looking for a good opportunity to uh, buy uh, in a counter trend trade. So now we've got another signal and now we've got a really good momentum push. So here would have been a good spot to get in. Um, actually, let me close that. So here would have been a good spot to get in. I probably would have placed a buy stop here. We placed my um, stop loss here and it would have been a one to one. So let's just see what happens um, with this trade. still kind of ranging and now we're getting some momentum push up and boom now we got our successful trade so you just can kind of see you just need to have a sense for the market see where you're at along that 50 moving average um, it's a lot of different things but I also wanted to show that there are times where you do pick losers and you do have losers or at least that's what happens to me so anyway thanks for watching I really appreciate it and take care